Father, we thank you today for our workers' meeting. Thank you for your people. Thank you for the excitement of serving you. We're asking, O oh Lord, that you empower everyone to be effective in ministry, in soul winning, reaching out to sinners effectively in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that we'll see converts. There'll be conviction. There'll be conversion. And people will continue with you after they come to know the Lord as their personal Savior in Jesus' name. Do this for us and for all the members of the church who ought to be witnessing every time. Confirm the message through us every time in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, we're coming to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. And in Acts, chapter 2, we're reading from verse 14. Acts, chapter 2, verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be it known unto you, and hearken to my words. That verse comes as a result of what had happened already. As you remember, in chapter 1, the Lord had told the disciples, all the members that were present, not only the apostles, but the apostles and the disciples, he, has, he had told them that they should tarry in Jerusalem until they will be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then he told them the result of that baptism, that immersion, that emilopin in the Holy Ghost. He said, and you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. The Holy Ghost comes upon them, and then they become witnesses, they become soul winners. And in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 14, we're told that they were gathered together and they were praying in obedience to what the Lord had told them. When we obey the Lord like that, we are saved, we are sanctified, and He tells us we need to seek the face of the Lord and pray until we are immersed in the Holy Ghost, baptized in the Holy Ghost. As we obey the Lord praying, the result will be like the own result will have power and the power to witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, then to the uttermost part of the earth. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 1, they were all seated together in one accord. While they had been praying, the Holy Ghost came upon them and all the signs that came. At that time, the many people gathered together. At that time, it was the time of Pentecost, a feast in Jerusalem which the Lord had ordained for the whole of Israel. And many thousands of people were there. Historians tell us that from 180 to 200,000 might gather at such a time. And when the people saw all that had happened to them in that upper room, they all came together and they were wondering, what about this? What has happened? Some people said they were drunk. Other people said they couldn't understand. There was confusion in their mind. It was at that point, Peter, now the apostle, with the eleven making twelve of them, stood up and lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. And uh, we're tackling the message tonight, power evangelism as at the beginning. Power evangelism as at the beginning. The power had come upon them, and they ministered, and they preached in the power of God, and many people came to know the Lord as their personal Savior. Acts chapter 11, verse 15. Acts 11, reading from verse 15. It's about, uh, you know, the, uh, the house of uh, Cornelius. They also received uh, the Holy Ghost. And uh, it says the Holy Ghost came upon them uh, as he began to speak. 
that Holy Ghost fell on them, on the house of Cornelius, as on us at the beginning. If the Holy Ghost came, support, came upon the apostles and the disciples and they began to witness and they went everywhere, everywhere they were scattered abroad, they were preaching the word. The same thing happens, uh, happened in the house of Cornelius. At the house of Cornelius received the Holy Ghost, the same power and the same anointing and the same unction and the same strength and the same revelation that they ought to also go and speak to other people it came upon them as at the beginning they received the power as at the beginning and they ought to should preach as at the beginning if we are saved the same way they were saved if we are sanctified the same way they were sanctified and if we are baptized and immersed in the Holy Ghost the same way they were baptized in the Holy Ghost it will have the same effect on us it will stir us up it will excite us it will give us passion it will give us fire in our spirit it will give us the boldness and the strength and the courage to go out to our own jerusalem to our own judea and to our own samaria even to the uttermost part of the earth as it happened to them at the beginning will experience the same as at the beginning will have that going power and will have the energy and the strength to declare the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ telling the sinners everywhere we find them all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and reminding everyone that we're powerless we're graceless we do not have the strength to save ourselves by the deeds of the law by the works of the law shall no man be justified but our salvation is in Christ that's why Christ came that's why Christ died for us as Savior and that's why he rose again for our justification and now if we confess him and we believe him and we hold on to him by faith then we become saved number one all have sinned and come short of the glory of god number two we cannot save ourselves nobody is good enough nobody is uh, righteous enough to save himself and everybody needs salvation and that's because we cannot do it that's why in due time christ came and he died for us and through the death and the resurrection of the lord jesus christ now we can have salvation what does it take we turn away from sin we repent of our sins and we hold on to the lord in faith that he is our savior by grace are you saved uh, through faith that not of yourselves it is the gift of god we have the same power that they had the same passion that they had and the same purpose that they had and the same pungency in the preaching of the word that they had power evangelism as at the beginning we're looking at three things that we look at the passage today number one christian experiences in the spirit by christian experiences will mean salvation by the spirit of god sanctification by the spirit of god and also holy ghost baptism by the spirit of god point one then christian experiences in the spirit point two christ's exaltation as the savior uh, the lord jesus was uh, given to the world as a savior and he came and declared himself as a savior and the angel emphasized you'll call in na his name uh, uh, the virgin will conceive and they bring forth a son uh, and you call his name jesus because he will save his people from their sins and his resurrection declares him uh, as the savior the apostles emphasize there's no name under heaven by which we can be saved except the name of Jesus Christ's exaltation as the Savior. Number three, conviction expressed by sinners and seekers. Conviction, they were preached in their heart. When they had Peter, as he spoke to them, and then they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? 
they were seeking the Lord for salvation they wanted to know what are we going to do and Peter responded and said repent and be baptized and have been baptized in water in the name of Jesus and you too will move on after that salvation you'll have all the other experiences and you'll have the gift of the Spirit for the promise is unto you and to your children even as many as the Lord our God shall call let's come to point number one in point number one Christian experiences in the Spirit come to Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 Acts chapter 2 reading from verse 16 but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel in verse 17 remember he said this is that what had happened to them now the baptism in the Holy Ghost with all the other consequences and the power that came on them this is that that Joel had prophesied and it shall come to pass in the last days says God I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and then he tells us in verse 18 in verse 18 and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy as you look at all the categories of people mentioned in those verses the Spirit of God is available for everyone that is everyone who is a child of God who has come to know the Lord already Christian experiences in the spirit there are three things we're looking at this is that that is as you look at the word of God and um, Peter the apostle was saying this experience you see what you hear what you see and the things that have happened to us is not something you cannot trace back to the scriptures that's why he said this is that and we want to remind ourselves that for salvation this is that we can trace our salvation back to the promise of God that he gave us in the Old Testament as sanctification we can trace that back to you to the promise you had given in the Old Testament so for salvation we can say this is that what was prophesied by this particular prophet that particular prophet in the Old Testament for sanctification the same thing this is that which was predicted and which was prophesied in the Old Testament and of course for the Holy Ghost baptism we can say this is that which was prophesied by the prophets of the Old Testament that makes us to look at three things number one salvation obtained as promised we cannot jump the queue we cannot just come in without salvation and then go to the Holy Ghost baptism and without the purifying of the chamber of the inner man of the place where the Holy Ghost will dwell and then just go like that and say we're seeking the Holy Ghost baptism first of all we have pardon in salvation number two we have purity in sanctification before we now go on to power in the baptism spirit outpouring as prophesied let's look at number one number one is salvation obtained as promised as we look at salvation and as we go out to preach a salvation salvation is not coming from a denomination from a church assembly from the dogma of a, a fellowship but it is coming directly from the scriptures and when we preach salvation we can say this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah chapter 64 and we're reading from verse 5 Isaiah chapter 64 reading from verse 5 thou meetest him that rejoices and walketh righteousness those that remember thee in thy ways behold thou art wrath for we have sinned 
and in those in and those in those is countenance and uh, continuance and we shall be saved and they are, they are coming to the lord and say we shall be saved looking at verse 6 it tells us in verse 6 but we all as an unclean thing and uh, we are all as an unclean thing uh, and all our righteousnesses are uh, as filthy rags and we all do fade away as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind uh, have taken us away as you look at that verse it's simply saying we are all as an unclean thing that is we are all sinners born in sin our nature is that of sin our life and lifestyle all of sin our practice all of sin and then it says all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags righteousness that man may produce is not sufficient for salvation it is saying that we cannot save ourselves our righteousness is not perfect enough to be accepted in, from the in the hand of the lord and it says we all do fade away as a leaf fading away we're going from bad to worse and many sinners will attest to that that things are bad for our worse for them now and worse through them now and worse in their life and practice than they were many years ago and the more knowledge they have and the more civilization they have and the more progress they have and the more money they have the worse they become morally that's why it says well do fade away as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind are taking us away sin separates from god this is salvation and we need to make the people understand the stage of the sinner the standing of the sinner the separation of the sinner from god before we present this the solution the lord jesus christ that comes to sin it says in verse 7 in verse 7 it says and there is none that calleth upon thy name that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee for thou hast hid thy face from us and has consumed us because of our iniquities they say judgment comes there's an earthly judgment there's going to be eternal judgment there's a present judgment there's going to be a perpetual judgment there is a fiery indignation of god against the sins of people even today that's why it says thou hast consumed us because of our iniquities but now he tells us in verse 8 in verse 8 but now O lord but now O lord thou art our father we can move away from darkness and come to light we can move away from being the children of wrath and they will become the children of the father salvation can take place thou O lord art our father we are the clay and thou art the potter and we all are the work of thy hand we understand then when we talk about salvation we can affirm and we can say this is that which was spoken by the prophet isaiah in ezekiel chapter 36 looking at verse 25 ezekiel chapter 36 and we're reading from verse 25 then will i sprinkle water clean water upon upon you and ye shall be clean that's talking about salvation the sinner is defiled the sinner is dirty the sinner is polluted the sinner is corrupt but now the lord himself says i bring conversion I bring salvation the point is when we talk about salvation salvation is not a, an afterthought it is something the lord himself had promised from the old testament through those prophets and we can say this is that talking about salvation which was prophesied by the prophets i will sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will i cleanse you 
and as Peter quoted from Joel chapter 2 let's come to Acts of the Apostles now chapter 2 verse 21 is being uh, talking from verse 16 all through to verse 20 now verse 21 look at what he says and it shall come to pass it's a part of the prophecy of Joel that whosoever shall call upon on the name of the Lord shall be saved this is that which was prophesied by Isaiah, by Jeremiah, by Ezekiel, by Joel, by all the other prophets that God will save. And that's what the angel affirmed, that his name shall be called Jesus because he shall save his people from their sins but not only that there is sanctification and concerning sanctification number two now we can say this is that and so as we come to the Lord we are not just depending on our feeling on our thoughts it's not because a deeper life has preached sanctification that's why we're seeking sanctification no it is what had been predicted already this is that sanctification experience as predicted we're coming to acts chapter 2 reading from verse 1 acts chapter 2 reading from verse 1 it says and when the day of pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place unity is the experience and is the expression as the evidence of their sanctification with one accord no argument among them no conflict among them and no disagreement among them no place seeking i will be there while you sitting on my seat no place seeking among them no scheming among them they were all with one accord in one place look at verse 46 in verse 46 it says and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple everything the lord had given to those apostles and to those disciples was willing to give to the three thousand that were converted on the day of pentecost that same oneness and that same unity and that same purified heart he was willing to give to them because sanctification was not limited to those apostles and to those disciples this is that look at john chapter 7 chapter 17 and we're looking at verse 17 john chapter 17 verse 17 sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth remember the lord jesus christ said i give them the word they have received the word and they have known that you sent me and then he said they are thine and you give them to me and then he said they are not of the world even as i'm not of the world i choose them i call them out of the world obviously they were saved after that salvation he now prayed for their sanctification sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth now the evidence now the expression now the experience of that sanctification look at verse 21 in verse 21 that they all may be one sanctify them through that thy truth why what will be the result what will be the evidence what will be the consequence that they all all may be one they are not in cliques they're not in different uh, groups opposing uh, each other but they all be one as thou father art in me and i in thee as exactly i father art in me and i in thee that's the unity that they also may be one in us sage as it was prophesied sanctified as it was predicted that the world may believe that thou hast sent me if they went out with the adamic nature if they went out with uh, argumentative hearts 
if they went out without the sanctification experience they will not have the world believing on the lord jesus christ if there was infighting it was it was disagreement if there was no unity or oneness among them it, if there was fighting or violence among them and they went out the world knowing that you are divided we are divided you are violent we are violent and you are disunited we are disunited the world knowing that they were disunited and they were not one the world will not believe that's why after salvation after the conversion after the cleansing and the forgiveness of their sins the lord said i'm praying for them that you sanctify them so that they will be one they'll be united and there'll be a oneness among them so that the world will believe that thou hast sent me look at verse 23 in verse 23 it says i in them i in them so that everything they will do everywhere they will go i in my purity i in my passion i in my purpose i'm the one propelling them to do what they do i in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one not in perfect unity not earthly unity not superficial unity that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know you see our sanctification contributes to effectiveness in evangelism effectiveness in reaching out effectiveness in going to talk to sinners you're saved and then you're sanctified and you go out to witness in that experience of sanctification it says that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me ezekiel chapter 11 we're reading from verse 19 ezekiel chapter 11 and we're reading from verse 19 and i will give them one heart that's sanctification i will give them one heart and it says that those disciples they were in one accord in one place they had experienced sanctification and their unity and oneness now demonstrated and, ex and expressed that sanctification but remember this is what the prophet had predicted and so we can say this is that i will give them one heart and i will put a new spirit within them and i will take the stony heart out of their flesh and will give them an heart of flesh jeremiah chapter 32 we're reading from verse 39 in jeremiah 32 reading from verse 39 and i will give them one heart that's why we say this is that which was predicted and prophesied and promised in the prophets you see jesus christ himself spoke about that oneness and ezekiel has spoken about that oneness jeremiah is now telling us that same thing predicted and prophesied and promised he says and i will give them one heart and one way well when we're sanctified we'll not be walking in divergent ways when we're sanctified we'll Will not be walking contrary to ourselves sanctification takes away the self within us the depravity within us and makes us to want to align our lives with, with that of christ you want to align your life with that of, of christ i want to align my life with that of christ and when we're for all following christ we'll have that one way that they may fear me forever for the for the good of them and of their children after them look at verse 40 in verse 40 it says and i will make an everlasting covenant with them that i will not turn away from them to do them good but i will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me this is that 
concerning salvation. This is that concerning sanctification. This is that concerning the spirit outpouring. Let's come to number three now. Spirit outpouring as prophesied. As prophesied. This is that. Already the Apostle Peter has confirmed that what the people were hearing and what the people were seeing is the result and the fulfillment of the Holy Ghost coming upon sanctified vessels as it was prophesied by Joel. This is that. Look at Joel chapter 2 verse 28. In Joel chapter 2 reading from verse 28 is talking about the Holy Ghost coming upon the people and it says it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out outpouring I will pour out in feeling I will pour out emotion I will pour out and it will not just be like a trickle it will not just be like a little thing it will be an experience that will overwhelm them an experience that will envelop them an experience that will endure them and endow them it shall come to pass afterward that I this is the work of the Lord it's not man who baptized another person in the Holy Ghost just like it's not man who can save another person it's not man who can sanctify another person this is the promise of God and this is the performance of God and this is the work that the Father himself will do I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and then he tells us as he continues in verse 29 and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days he's talking about the last days he's talking about the time of the apostles in the early church and is talking about us until Christ will come in those days I will pour out my spirit look at Isaiah chapter 44 reading from verse 3 Isaiah because we're, what we're seeing is this is that which was prophesied by the prophets of the Old Testament so we have the sure ground and we have a firm solid ground on which we stand when we preach salvation when we preach sanctification and when we preach holy ghost baptism in isaiah chapter 44 verse 3 for i will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground i will pour I will pour, I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. In John chapter 7, reading from verse 37, John chapter 7, reading from verse 37, again, this is that the prophet spoke about salvation. Christ spoke about salvation. The prophets spoke about sanctification. Christ spoke about sanctification. The prophets spoke about Holy Ghost baptism. Christ spoke about Holy Ghost baptism. This is that in John chapter 7, verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink and then in verse 38 it says he that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly that word in the original means out of his inner man out of his bosom out of the dead of his heart out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water and then in verse 39, verse 39 says, But they spake he of the Spirit, Holy Spirit, of the Spirit, Holy Ghost. 
which they that believe on him they believed on him they were saved they believed on him to receive the fulfillment of the prayer of sanctification and they are sanctified and now they believe on him to pour out the spirit as it was reaching that, that it says that should believe on him for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified but now in Acts chapter 2 Acts chapter 2 verse 33 it tells us Christ has now ascended he has now gone to heaven and because he's now glorified is pouring out the power is pouring out the dewmit of the Holy Ghost Acts chapter 2 verse 33 therefore being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost he received of the Father what the prophets had promised from Isaiah to Jeremiah to Ezekiel and to Joel and to Micah and to all those prophets what the Father had promised the promise of the Holy Ghost he has shed forth this which you now see and hear when you are baptized when you are immersed in the Holy Ghost there will be something to see there will be something to hear you will not remain the same as you were salvation a definite, definite experience sanctification a definite experience and the spirit outpouring baptism in the holy ghost a definite experience we come to point number two now in point number two christ's exaltation as the savior as peter declared to the people and preached unto them he exalted christ and that's what we ought to do as we go out and make the proclamation as we go out and we proclaim that jesus is savior and jesus is healer and jesus is all in all for us and for them we talk about christ and christ alone because we cannot save the people our church cannot save anyone Doctrine cannot save anyone. Turning over a new leaf cannot save anyone. The works of our hand cannot save anyone. Religion cannot save anyone. The Savior is Christ. And Christ is the Savior. Christ's exaltation as the Savior. We're looking at three things. Number one, the vicarious death of Christ as a substitute number two the victorious resurrection of christ our savior number three the vital faith in christ for our salvation let's look at number one number one the vicarious death of christ as our substitute acts chapter 2 reading from verse 22 in acts chapter 2 Verse 22, ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Verse 23, it tells us, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and for knowledge of God ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain Peter wanted the people to know that the death of Christ was not an accident the death of Christ was not just in the hands of the Jewish people that said crucify him it's by the foreknowledge of god right from genesis chapter 3 verse 15 i will put enmity between thee satan and the woman 
between thy seed, the people that you are at, as children of Satan, ye of your father the devil, and between thy seed and her seed, the seed of the virgin. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That's the foreknowledge and the counsel, the terminate counsel of God, that only through him can we be saved. For by wicked hands ye have crucified and slain him, the vicarious death of Christ as our substitute. Romans chapter 5, reading from verse 6. In Romans chapter 5, reading from verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. As we talk to sinners, as we pray to sinners, we must not dwell only on their sin. Yes, we tell them all have sinned, and because of that, you will not say you have lived a perfect life. Don't compare your life with the lives of other people. Compare your life with the life of Christ. You have missed the mark. You have sinned against God. In fact, it says, all have sinned. And when we were yet sinners without strength to save ourselves, Christ died for the ungodly. If they say, I think I'm too bad, how can I be saved? He died for the ungodly. I have not lived a good, righteous life. Christ died for the ungodly. I regret everything and the life I have lived. Christ died for the ungodly. Don't allow their reactions or their arguments or their excuses to put you up. Center everything you are saying on Christ. Look at verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. For God, but God commended, commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It's not his will that we should die and perish in sin. That's why he sent Jesus to be our substitute and to take our place. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, he didn't die only for the Jews, he didn't die only for the good people, he died for bad people, he died for righteous people, he died for godly people, he died for the person we're talking to, he died for me, he died for you. Because we don't judge that if one died for all, they were all dead. In verse 15, it says, and that he died for all. He emphasized that again. The Holy Ghost emphasized that again. He died for all. And he died for you. And any time the devil will tell you, you're too big a sinner. You're too bad a sinner. You remember Christ died for all your sins and you put your faith in Christ that's how we have salvation we exalt Christ as our substitute he died in our place it says that they which live now after that salvation should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again let's come to number two there number two is the victorious resurrection of christ our savior he rose again acts chapter five in acts chapter five 
reading from verse 30 Acts chapter 5 verse 30 the God of our fathers raised up Jesus raised up Jesus he rose again yes he died yes he was slain yes he was crucified but according to what the father had planned and prophesied through those prophets and predicted that he, he will not remain in the grave he rose again God raised him up raised up Jesus whom he slew and hanged on a tree verse 31 look at the consequence of that now in verse 31 him as God exalted with his right hand to be a priest and his savior the father now after that resurrection resurrection and exaltation lifted him up raised him up that now is a priest is lord and is the savior for to give repentance to israel and forgiveness of sins in romans chapter 4 reading from verse 22 romans chapter 4 verse 22 and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness talking about the righteousness imputed imparted unto abraham and then verse 23 in verse 23 now it was not written for his sake alone for abraham's sake alone that it was imputed to him verse 24 but for us also for us to repent for us to believe for us to take jesus as a personal savior for us to understand that he christ died for us that he christ rose again for justification that christ became our substitute our sin bearer and our savior but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that restored jesus our lord from the dead number three number three talks about the necessity of putting our faith in christ and christ alone not christ and your good works not christ and your paying tithes and offering not good not christ and all the philanthropic things you do you understand you believe that your salvation depends on christ and christ alone you couldn't save yourself don't don't go around and then say god you understand i'm not too bad that doesn't save i'm righteous that doesn't save you cannot be as righteous as the holy angels in heaven your righteousness is not enough christ and christ alone it says for us to whom this righteousness shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up jesus our lord from the dead now our faith vital faith in christ for salvation romans chapter 10 reading from verse 9 romans chapter 10 verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the soul winner cannot believe for you and the soul winner cannot confess it for you the preacher cannot say you are saved salvation is between you and christ the preacher can only point christ to you as your substitute as your sin bearer 
as your savior you have to take that in a definite uh, place in a definite way of confession and confirmation yes i believe he is my savior yes i believe he died for me yes i believe he took all my sins away that he thou shall confess with thy mouth the lord jesus that is jesus as your lord and you turn over your life unto him to be in control and to be in charge of your life you confess him as jesus your lord and shall believe in thine heart shall believe in thine heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved look at verse 10 in verse 10 for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation ephesians chapter 2 reading from verse 8 ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 for by grace are you saved through faith by grace not by good works by grace not by religion by grace not by self punishment there are people who try to punish themselves for the sins they have committed they might walk on pebbles they might roll on the ground they might deny themselves of food of a food they might sleep on the bare ground they might inflict punishment injury on their body because they are asking for forgiveness and salvation all that is the work of the sinner's hand all that will not save for by grace are you saved through faith the faith that takes hold of the promise of god that takes hold of the faithfulness of god and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god verse 9 in verse 9 it says not of words lest any man should boast verse 10 it says now after that salvation we are his workmanship created in christ jesus he recreates us if any man be in christ is a new creature old things are passed away and behold all things are become new we are recreated we are refashioned we are transformed by the power of the lord jesus christ now unto good works good works do not come before salvation all the works that come before salvation are referred to as our righteousnesses which are like filthy rags but after salvation we have the good works which god has before ordained that we should walk in them let's come to point number three in point number three conviction expressed by sinners and seekers we read in acts chapter 2 verse 37 they had heard the message christ had been exalted and the preacher had been pungent enough to point to them they were the sinners they crucified christ salvation comes if they will call on the name of the lord an assurance is given to everybody that whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved now they are to respond or react they have to receive or reject the preacher cannot do all the talking the soul winner must not do all the talking we need to give chance to those who have heard and to the person who has heard the word of his grace and the word of salvation 
to either receive or reject to either respond or react and now we see their response in verse 37 Acts chapter 2 verse 37 now when they had this they were preached in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do conviction expressed by sinners and seekers three things we're looking at number one conviction and the pricking of their conscience conviction and pricking in their conscience number two conversion and purging from all corruption number three continuation with perseverance in Christ let's come to number one number one conviction and pricking in their conscience look at that verse again verse 37 for now when they heard this what did they hear they heard what the prophet had foretold they heard about the crucifixion of Christ they heard it was for their salvation they heard that the Christ crucified is now Christ the Savior they heard except they repented of their sin they will carry that guilt to the grave and if they carry the guilt to the grave they will perish forever that's why they now ask any solution any forgiveness any way out any way we can be free from the guilt and not carry our guilt to the grave they were preached in their hearts and they searched unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do they said we don't know we now understand our religion cannot save us what shall we do we now understand being a Jew cannot save us our nationalism cannot save us what shall we do we now know that our good works cannot save us our evil goes beyond the good that we have done what shall we do to be saved conviction came upon them john chapter 16 we're reading from verse 8 john chapter 16 reading from verse 8 and when he is come he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment and Lord Jesus was talking about the coming of the Holy Ghost and he says when that Holy Ghost comes it will come upon you it will come within you and through his revelation and through his unction and through his inspiration you will preach you will witness and the Holy Ghost in you through you will convict the world of sin will reprove the world of sin and they will want to know how to be saved that the evidence were filled were saturated were overwhelmed were infilled with the Holy Ghost some people say they spoke in tongues that's right initial evidence of being baptized in the Holy Ghost after that does your life convict sinners does your preaching convict sinners does your preaching bring people to their knees asking the question after they were preached in their heart what shall we do to be saved when the Holy Ghost comes upon us our words will take effect in the hearts in the lives of the sinners our lives will bring conviction to the people who are sinning 
they will know they are sinners. They will know that if they died in that condition, they'll carry their guilt and condemnation to the grave. He'll speak of righteousness and of judgment. They will cry out, Romans chapter 7, verse 24. Romans chapter 7, verse 24. O wretched man that I am, when conviction comes upon the sinner, they'll not say, O righteous man that I am, O good man that I am, O religious man that I am, O church man that I am, O communicant, I take the Lord's Supper, O communicant that I am, O confirmed man that I am. When the conviction of the Holy Ghost comes upon the sinner, as we preach in the preaching, in the power, in the pungency of the Holy Ghost, they will cry out, O wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? They'll have sorrow for their sin. Second Corinthians chapter 7. In Second Corinthians chapter 7, reading from verse 10, it tells us, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, not to be regretted of, but the sorrow of the world work at death. Point number two. Point number two, we have conversion and purging from all corruption. Conversion and purging from all corruption. Acts chapter two, reading from verse 38. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. They had asked a question. They responded to the message of salvation. And they wanted to know what were they going to do. Here comes the response of the apostle. And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the holy ghost verse 40 in verse 40 he reassured them and with many other words did he testify and exhort saying save yourselves from this untoward generation. He was saying, come out from among them. He was saying, repent. He was saying, come out of the evil, out of the evil generation and distinguish yourself and come out of the religion that cannot save, of the Jewish nationality that cannot save of the righteousnesses as fill the rats that cannot sin come out and put your faith and put your trust and put your confidence only in christ for your salvation did they accept that look at verse 41 in verse 41 then they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Number three, look at this continuation with perseverance in Christ. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. That's the evidence of real conversion. You are not running after them and then saying, Oh, I only raised up my hand. I only gave myself to the Lord. I'm saved already. As to being in fellowship with the church of God, I'll think about that. We don't see the evidence of conversion there. Conversion means a change of life. 
a change of direction old things are gone old friends are gone old gangs are gone and old um, old assemblies you forsake them a new life has come a new family has now come and a new fellowship has now come and they all the three thousand without exception because they were convicted of the holy ghost converted in the power by the power of the holy ghost and now they continued in the grace of god and they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers they began to learn they began to study they began to fellowship they began to pray and they continued for the people of God or the church of God verse 46 in verse 46 and they continuing daily they are not just coming to church on the day of worship and then going back to their vomit during the week they continue daily with one accord in the in the in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house and did eat their meat of gladness the joy of salvation was evident in them and singleness of heart they had a steadfast devoted and fixed focus on the lord singleness of heart purpose of heart perseverance in the lord they continued we're looking at john chapter 8 john chapter 8 reading from verse 30 as he speak these words many believed on him verse 31 then said jesus to those jews which believed on him if he continue if they're real converts they'll not remain in the forest they'll not remain in the sea of corrupt humanity if he continue in my word they'll not continue in the sinful society they will not continue in the pollution defilement corruption of their hearts if he continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed romans chapter 11 reading from verse 22 romans 11 verse 22 behold therefore the goodness and the severity of god on them which fail severity on them who say they are born again and they fall back into sin severity of them who said they came to christ and they went back to the world severity wrath judgment indignation but now it says but toward thee goodness if thou continue in his goodness if you continue in grace if you continue in godliness if you continue under the guidance and supervision and control of the holy spirit if thou continue in his goodness otherwise thou also shalt be cut off first timothy chapter 4 reading from verse 15 first timothy chapter 4 we're reading from verse 15 meditate upon these things give thyself wholly completely entirely absolutely to them that is to the word of god that thy profiting may appear to all verse 16 in verse 16 take each unto thyself and to the doctrine and continue in them that's the evidence of salvation continue in the fellowship continue in the teaching and the doctrine of the word of god continue as a new creature continue in the new life we have now discovered in christ continue 
in them for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee the soul when I himself must continue the believer and the minister of God himself must continue the servant of God himself must continue the preacher himself must continue for in doing this in continuing thou shalt both save thyself the preacher and them that hear thee second timothy chapter 3 verse 14 in second timothy chapter 3 we're reading from verse 14 but continue thou new convert but continue thou and those who say they have received the Lord, they have accepted the Lord as their substitute, as their sin bearer, as their savior, and the spirit of God is bearing witness in their hearts. They're now children of God. There is one word they must not forget, and it's a practical word, and it's a word that makes us to see the expression and the evidence and the experience of salvation in their hearts, in their lives. And the word is continue, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them and we who are preachers we who are workers we who are leaders and we who are leading other people to christ may the lord give us the grace and the courage and the fortitude and the diligence to keep on following the lord until jesus comes in jesus name you will follow the Lord. You'll continue with the Lord. You'll continue in faith. You'll continue in grace. you continue walking in the light. And you continue in the salvation of the Lord. you continue in your single mindedness. you continue in your steadfastness with the Lord. you continue in obedience to all the revealed word and will of God. And I pray every challenge you have, every temptation you have, anywhere you are confronted by any danger, the Lord will uphold you. And the Lord will uphold your conviction and your commitment and your consecration in Jesus' name. Remember, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but he who will endure he who will continue until the end, the same shall be saved. I pray you will continue to the end in Jesus' name. Your converts will continue to the end in Jesus' name. And we, the preachers, and they who have heard and accepted and received the word of God will all meet together at the feet of Christ when he comes for the glorious church in Jesus name I will continue I will continue my converse will continue the Lord confirmed that in every one of our lives and ministries in Jesus name Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's rise up, talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's take everything we've heard to the Lord and the Lord confirm the power of the Spirit in every life in Jesus' name.